Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Spencer TCG here with another pre-release slash draft guide for you. Pre-release is just a couple days away and I am super excited to play in it. I am also excited to do some drafting, so come check out this video if you guys want to see the cards and how I will rate them. So before we talk about the cards, we are going to mention the tiers. So S are cards that are just super powerful. They make you want to switch to the color. Maybe you get it in pack one and you're like, yep, I'm going to be yellow now. Or even later in pack two, you're like, I need to splash yellow somehow. I need to make this my secondary color because this card is just so good. And then F are the complete opposite these cards are terrible they're niche they just don't fit they got bad stats they're upgrades you know cards like that usually fit into the f tier and then we got everything in between the majority of your deck will be in the c range but the more b cards and the less d cards you can do the better your experience will be but let's get into the leaders so uh the yellow bad guys we got three leaders we got ventress jingo fett and general grievous so ventress is going to be on the cheaper end of them she comes out at four resources and when she's deployed she has an attack trigger that says if you played an event this turn she gets plus one attack and does her damage before the defender. Similar to seven drop Han Solo, she'll be able to kill a unit without taking any damage back as long as she can one shot it. Um, she deploys at four, which is super nice. I think her non-leader effect is kind of underwhelming. It is pretty much the same thing. You can turn her sideways to attack with a unit, making it one bigger if you played an event this phase. Um, I don't know how much value you're going to get out of that in the early game, but in the later parts of the game, maybe you'll be able to squeak, you know, a couple damage here and there. Um, but when she deploys, I feel like she's kind of strong because she has four health, which is enough for limited because there's not really four, four ambushers running around. She'll survive all the three fours that were played. I think if your opponent played a four, three the turn before, you're kind of SOL, like that's going to feel really bad. Um, but you know, there's going to be the scenarios where your opponent did play the three, four the turn before. You flip the Ventress, you play an event. Uh, and then you first strike, you do your damage first against the three drop, and you get a good value in. The problem with leaders like this is just like, she's just really understated. Like even Sabine, I think was hard to make work um, in set one, and Sabine had one more HP and also technically did three damage. So, uh, you know, there's a problem there. But yeah, I think if you have a decently aggro-y mid-range shell with uh, events that are worth playing, then you can consider Ventress. I think she uh, probably holds the C to B range where she's just kind of playable, especially since we have three options of leaders and we're always getting General Grievous. I'm not sure how often we're going to be like, yeah, I should make the switch to Ventress. Next up, we have Grievous. Like I just said, he is an auto-include. You are always going to be able to uh, get this leader because he just comes in the pre-release kits. Now for a draft, um, you know, that's gonna be different. But for pre-release, you are guaranteed Grievous. So he has the action, you can give a droid unit Sentinel for this phase, and uh, that's it. And then he flips on six resources, has eight defense, which is quite a lot. Um, and on attack, you may give a droid unit plus one, plus zero, and Sentinel for this phase. Um, his effect seems very underwhelming, but I actually can imagine a lot of scenarios where you have one ones lying around, and then you make it super annoying for your opponent because they now have Sentinel, so your opponent needs to, you know, use their five drop or six drop and swing into your one one, and you're able to be very aggressive with your other units. So while his effect seems defensive, I actually think you're manipulating uh, the board state, making your opponent trade into your small guys so that your big guys can take value trades or go face. And when he comes out, he has eight defense. He's super hard to kill. Like this leader is gonna stick around for a long time and I'm really glad he has four attack. I think going from three to four is the difference for you know a little bit more aggressive leader. So I actually think this will be, uh, even though it seems offensive, I think a more aggressive strategy. And I'm gonna give Grievous uh, a B just for um, that idea. I think if you're looking to make him more defensive, I think you want to look elsewhere, but I think this is a great, like, aggressive leader. Uh, not necessarily saying you're going to play all low drops, but just, like, how you play the game, right? You're going to want to go face. You're going to want to give your small guys sentinel. You want to make it as annoying for your opponent and to attack into your board. Next up, we had to use the showcase just because it looks so nice. We got Django Fett is a five 
uh, deploys on five and is a three seven, has the same text on both sides. When a friendly unit deals damage to an enemy unit, you may exhaust this leader. If you do exhaust that enemy unit, speaking of all the one ones running around, you know, you can now trade your one one into a guy and then exhaust it. But you know, I think if you compare what they're doing, it's like, hey, maybe instead of attacking with my guy and exhausting their thing, I can just give it Sentinel and make them use their action to attack my guy. That's kind of how I see it. Obviously, um, it does no restrictions, so you can send a 1-1 into their leader and kind of try to tap it inevitably forever you know maybe that's like a good goal that you can have in your game which is totally reasonable but um he deploys on five and has seven health which means she's hard, he's hard to kill but only three attack i don't like that number i mean obviously we can't make everyone four sevens like boba but yeah three is just a little low i don't think he's gonna be that impactful and his effect i feel like is almost counterintuitive to what the rest of the set is trying to do like your one ones uh, we want to exploit we want to give them Sentinel to make annoying. Like we have a lot of uses that we could use our one ones for. Um, so this is like a third use that our one ones could be doing. I guess it's similar to Grievous. I just think I prefer Grievous to this card, which is weird. It's not what I initially thought I would, but I think I do prefer Grievous to the Django Fett, especially since Grievous is reliable because you always get him. You should probably lean towards the Grievous, um, but you can try the Django Fett. I think you'll feel similar ish you know but he's again more defensive since you need to attack their unit with your cards instead of making them attack your units if that makes sense so he's a he's a little he's a little more defensive than grievous so if you're trying to play the long game and you have ways to make one ones and you just want to slow down your opponent's leader or their best card you can try to exhaust it like that um if you have like you know pings that come out of nowhere like i think uh, that's cool like if you can make your unit deal damage to another unit um with like an event effect like overwhelming barrage i'm pretty sure that would like trigger jingle fet because it says when a unit deals damage um and that is a unit dealing its damage just through an event but there's not many of those lying around the set so i'm gonna give jingle fet just a c playable he's not terrible i like his stats fine i just think i'd rather be playing grievous Next up, we have the base, which again, we're not trying to play double yellow ever. But, you know, if you pick up this base and you're thinking about considering it in another color, uh, it says each leader unit you control gets plus one, plus zero. I really don't think this is worth it. I mean, in fact, I think it's like really good with Ventress because it just makes her go to five with first strike, which is a lot better. Um, but we don't want to be playing double yellow. Uh, I think this base is an F. I don't think we want to sacrifice four HP for one attack on our leader. Again, unless you're trying to do something very specific, uh, you know, like on Maul, him going to seven attack makes him pretty much kill everything. And if you think that's worth it to you, then, you know, you can, you can move this to the D rating and it's, it's that niche thing, right? But I, I don't think that you guys want to be looking to play this when you open it most of the time. And now we got our units, and we spent a long time talking about those leaders. So let's go a little bit faster. We have a one costed, one two, soulless one space unit. On attack, you may exhaust a friendly droid unit or General Grievous leader or unit. If you do, this gets plus two, plus zero for the attack. Um, I really like this spaceship if we're playing Grievous because I can just tap my leader and swing in for three um, on a one drop which is kind of crazy you can also you know tap your one ones that you make throughout the game excuse me so i i like solace one actually a lot i think i'm going to give it that b range i think this card should always go in your deck you know the downside of it is that later in the game you can't really play it into three four spaceships but like you know for turn one of the game excuse me for turn one of the game this kind of card feels like an a-wing in a grievous deck so i want to be playing a-wings I like that it swings for three. It's very aggressive. If you have multiple one drops, you can play another one alongside this. So, I mean, two one drops turn one that are swinging for at least three and something else feels pretty good. That's why it gets the B range. Next up, we have a three costed three two spaceship elite P38 Starfighter. It says when played and when defeated, you may deal one damage to a unit. I like that this thing picks off. There's actually like a lot of little pings going around. Um, this card is a good example of what I think should work with Jingle Fett because your unit is dealing the damage, right? So this can deal a damage, it can tap the card down, and that can feel pretty good, and you're able to do that twice. I think its stats are just good enough 
Um, you know, the three, four spaceships that can trade into this die because it has the win defeated effect. And because if you count it's win played, your card was able to do just probably a little bit more than their three, four. I'm gonna give this card again, the B rating. Uh, this card should always, for the most part, be in your deck. Next up, we have Infiltrating Demolisher. It is a four costed four, five ground unit with exploit one. So, you know, we could play this card for two resources if we sacrifice a one, one. And it has Saboteur. I actually uh, think this card is solid in every way. It is a four costed four, five, which makes it the extreme example of a C. Like, this is a very good playable, but it's just playable. And then you add in the exploit. So sometimes, you know, you make one ones just coincidentally, and now you contribute them to have a two costed four, five. Uh, which is very, very solid. I'm going to give this card as well a B. Next up, we have Rush Clovis. It is a four costed three, five that doesn't have ambush, even though it's a rusher. Ah, and it has raid two on attack. If the defending player controls no ready resources, create a battle droid token. Nice, so I can play this card and get a one one alongside of it if I'm a little bit patient. And this card has raid two, so it's swinging for five. I like that it has five health, which means I think it's gonna live through most things. Uh, this card seems solid, it has upside. Um, should always go in your deck, I think, is also a B. These cards have been pretty good. Next up, we have Tactical Droid Commander. It is a 5-costed 4-4 four, four ground unit with Exploit 2. When you play another Separatist unit, you may exhaust a unit that costs the same as or less than the played unit. Nice. An example of not a good card. I don't ever want to be playing uh, 5 resources for a 4-4. Four, four. Um, even if I could play 3 resources for this, it feels okay, but I had to sacrifice a 1-1. One, one. Obviously, I could play 1 resource for this, but now I'm sacrificing a lot of my board. Um, I think I'd rather be doing something like a different exploit unit. Uh, so I think this card's pretty niche. I don't really like its effect too much. I'm not a big fan of, you know, playing things to exhaust things. So I'm going to give this card a D. I think sometimes you can make it work, but I think we're going to be cutting this card more than we're trying to play it. Next up, we have Zero the Hut. It is a 5-costed 2-8 ground unit. When played for each opponent, you may exhaust a unit that player controls. So you're just going to be having one opponent. And on attack for each opponent, you may exhaust a resource that player controls. Uh, this card is super annoying for your opponent because, you know, you can be tapping down the resources if you have the initiative. Problem is, he's only swinging for 2 and he costs 5. I think this is another example of a five drop that I want to avoid. I think he's just super slow. Yes, he can like shut down our opponent's resource for that turn, but you know, at what cost? And the cost was a five drop that swings for two. So I'm gonna give this card a D. I really don't think you want to be playing it unless it's like literally your only option at the five cost. Next up, we have Sand Hill. It is a six costed three seven ground unit with exploit three. So we could play zero for this card um on attack for each friendly unit that was defeated this phase ready a friendly resource so this guy's kind of interesting um i don't really see much combo potential here for like limited because it's limited um you know i do i want to you know what am i doing like I, okay i have six resources i have two one ones i kill them both i pay this for two and then I untap with my resources and then I play another six drop. I mean, like that line is pretty solid, I guess, but I'm killing my one ones again. He's kind of understated. Um, oh, and his effect is on attack. You know, it's not actually not on play, so I'm not getting those resources back right away. So we're not comboing. I was just watching this combo. But we're not comboing him right away. Um, we're not getting those resources back. So actually, after the, the quick reading check that I just did to myself, I like this guy a lot less. Um, his stats are just kind of bad for what he is. Um, obviously, you could do some crazy swing turns later in the game if, you know, you already have him on the field and then the next turn you do some crazy exploit. I just don't know if all this is gonna line up. I'm also gonna give him a D rating. Um, he just stats are so bad that we probably shouldn't be playing him. Next up, we have Cad Bane. is a seven costed seven seven ground unit underworld bounty hunter. When played, this unit captures up to three enemy non-leader units with a total of eight HP or less um, remaining HP. On attack, the defending player may rescue a card they own guarded by this unit. If they do, um, draw two cards. So he's gonna ideally take three cards away from my opponent's field, and then every time I attack with him, I get to draw two cards because my opponent probably wants their card back. 
Um, you know, he's like short term removal, but he has a decent body. A seven drop seven seven is totally respectable. I mean, things that swing for seven is just a lot, right? That's like a fourth of my opponent's HP. So they're gonna be pretty sad when I hit him in the face for seven. And the fact that it like immediately can clear something, and if your opponent doesn't have like, you know, removal for it right away, um, you get to hit him for seven and then they'll get their card back. But at that point, like you already got the seven in, their card comebacks rested, and you got to draw two cards. So overall, Cad Bane feels pretty solid. Um, I think he's pushing that A range because he is, you know, short-term removal. If anything, sometimes you can just remove three small bodies and totally dissuade, like, that aggro play. And now you have this seven attack body. And yes, your opponent will get, eventually get back those units, but, you know, you're in control of that. If you're not in the position to give them back, then just don't attack. So I like, I like that versatility there. And yeah, we'll give him the A. He has a kind of a crazy effect. I mean, removing three cards with one card is, is not okay. Next up, we have Wartime Profiteering. It is a one-cost event. Look at uh, the look at cards from the top of your deck equal to the number of units that were defeated this phase. Draw one and put the other cards on the bottom of your deck in a random order. So this card is only ever drawing one and it costs one resource. You know, instead of playing this card, you guys can just draw the card you know, for turn. So uh, do that. This card is an F-. minus. Next time, we have Unnatural Life. It is a three-costed event. Play a unit that was defeated this phase from your discard pile. It costs two less and enters play ready. At the start of the regroup phase, defeat it. So you're overpaying for a unit to make sure that it gets ready. Like you're overpaying one to make sure a unit comes in ready with the condition that it died already that turn. Uh, I think that effect is kind of niche uh, and hard to use. And for that, I'm gonna give this card a D. Uh, also that unit like dies. Um, so, you know, that's like pretty bad. I think there are scenarios where you could like play this and like create lethal in the late game. Um, but I think that's few and far between. It's, this card is probably closer to an F guys. I think it's not, its purpose is not for limited. And that's why it's also a rare. That's another reason you can tell. Its purpose is not for limited. So this is like an F to D. I mean, you can like sneak in damage. So like, you know, cards like this, sometimes I just throw in my deck. Cause I'd be like, you know, if the, everything lines up, maybe I can, you know, get him to kill my unit, bring the unit back. Maybe the unit has an on play effect and then I trade that unit right away and it feels like okay to do something like that. But, you know, I'd, I probably am going to resource this card in like almost every game. So, you know, just, just be wary. I think this card is like the F to D range. Next up, we have On the Doorstep. It is a four costed event. Create three battle joy tokens and ready them. Um, I actually really like this card because it's three immediate damage to your opponent's face. You get three tokens that creates exploit three. If you have something in your hand that has exploit three, you have ramped two resources into that card. You can also do it, sorry, you can also do it um, after attacking with all three units. So you can play it, get your three units, get three damage, and then ramp, and that feels pretty good. Um, this card is actually, I think, solid in a lot of ways and synergizes with a lot of the set. I'm gonna give it a solid B, um, but this, this card does feel pretty good. Um, surprisingly, you'd think it's like whatever, but yeah, no, no, making three one ones is, is respectable. And yeah, now we're getting to the quote unquote good guy leaders. We have Chancellor Palpatine and Quinlan Voss. We have the example of the worst leader in the set and probably one of the better ones, but um, you know, Palpatine is super cool. He's like a deck building dream or nightmare, depending on who you are. Um, you know, I'm really excited to build decks with Palpatine, but um, for the sake of limited, you really, really don't want a leader that can't be deployed. Um, but he is the king of value, right? Uh, I guess we should read him. So, you know, he comes out on his good guy side. If a friendly uh, good guy unit was defeated this phase, draw a card, heal two damage from your base, then flip this leader. And then on the other side, it says, if you play the bad guy card this phase, create a clone tro trooper token, which is a 2-2, two -two, deal two damage to each enemy base, and then flip this leader. I mean, so, you know, your leader deploying is pretty much how many 2-2s two can you make in the game while you're dealing two damage to their face, healing two damage, and drawing cards. Like, he feels like he does a lot, though, again, because we don't have, you know, the cards to effectively deck build him, we're just going to end up like, you know, hurting our brain, trying to think that we can make this guy work. I'm sure someone at your pre-release will, but I just don't think it's gonna go really well for him. I'd much rather just play on curve and then summon my leader as a unit and then, you know, hit them with that. So we're giving Palpatine an F sadly, but he is super, super cool. 
and I look forward to him in Constructed. Next up, we have Quinlan Voss. When you play a unit, you may exhaust this leader. If you do, deal one damage to an enemy unit that costs the same as the played unit. And then on the flip side, it does the exact same thing, but you can deal that one damage um, to something that costs the same or less than the played unit. Also, Quinlan Voss, uh, on its flip side, can do it multiple times. So if you play like, you know, a three drop and a two drop, you can kill your opponent's one ones that are lying around the field because last turn they played, um, you know, on the doorstep or whatever. Um, this leader is a 3-7. What you talked about, the stats are fine. Like seven health on five is really good. The three attack is kind of weak. He kind of makes up for it though because he deals damage to enemy units, which is nice, right? You can like pick them off. So while he is a little underwhelming in the attack range, he kind of makes up for it because he's dealing damage. I think this is like, you know, if you need to play yellow good guys, you have to play Quinlan Voss because the other choice is unplayable. And uh, I like dealing damage to things. Uh, it does suck that it has to be the same cost. So like you can't pick off your opponent's one ones. Um, but you know, when you play your three, four, you can deal one damage to their three, four, making it a three, three, letting you value trade. Um, I think dealing damage is good. And I do, do think his flip side uh, is pretty relevant. I think this guy is approaching the A tier. Um, so yeah, like B to A, I think if you like consider that there is no other option for yellow good guys, then I guess he has to be an A because we're not playing Palpatine, right? Like <laughs> that's for sure. Now we get to the units. We have a one costed two one space unit. Uh, when played, you may return a friendly non-leader non-vehicle unit to its owner's hand. Uh, this card's a little bit understated unless you pair it with another one drop. It has like an effect that you don't have to use and obviously you would only use when you can feel like you get value from it. I'm unsure how often you're gonna get value from bouncing one of your own guys in a limited environment. You probably don't want to be doing that. Um, I also don't really think you wanna be playing this card most of the time. I'm gonna give it a D, unless you really need early game plays. Uh, we have Padme uh, is a two cost one four ground unit with coordinate on attack, give an enemy unit neg three, neg zero for this phase. Uh, as you guys know, I don't like understated two drops. Um, I guess she adds up to five, but I really, really want two attack to come out of my two drops at least. I mean, three attack is better. She has a decent coordinate effect. I mean, I think you're going to want this card in a coordinate heavy deck because she has four HP. So, you know, she'll stick around and maybe you're able to, you know, get off more guys. But her coordinate is on attack. So I have to attack with a very crappy unit, right? It has one attack and then you know, give something neg three and then hope to attack with something else to get that value trade. I think she's a little bit slow in that regard. I think your opponent can play around that. You also need coordinate for all of this magic fairyland stuff to work. So I'm gonna give her that D. I think she's a little niche and I'd rather just play a two, three without having to do all this extra go between. <sighs> Next up, we got R2D2. It is a two costed two, four ground unit full of solutions. Uh, when played, you may discard a card from your hand if you do, search the top three cards of your deck for a card and draw it. Uh, cool. So just some nice hand filtering. It sucks you have to discard first, but I kind of like it. I mean, the stats on this card are perfect in every way, right? Like I have a one, a, a one, a turn one, two, four. So he is cheating the 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 stats by one. And whenever you cheat the stats by one in the beginning of the game, it's much better than cheating stats by one at the end of the game, right? Like. Uh, this card cannot really be answered by almost anything your opponent plays. They'd have to play a 3-2 in conjunction with Quinlan Voss to get that extra damage. And even then, they're just trading. So uh, this card is solid. I mean, something just for its stats, I think, is a C. I think because he has the hand filtering, especially in a limited environment, I think you're going to have some bad cards. And being able to discard that and hopefully find something better, I think, makes it uh, go to the B range. I mean, this card should just always be in your deck because of its great stats. Next up, we have Ahsoka Tano. Always ready for trouble is a three costed three four ground unit, force Jedi and Republic, so all the tags. While you control fewer units than an opponent, including this card, uh, this unit gains ambush. This card with ambush is solid, and she has action pay two, return this unit and each upgrade on her to their owner's hand. She's a legendary, so you're not gonna see her much. I like the value that you can get from her. I think it's cool if your opponent has a bunch of one ones and then you ambush her in, and then maybe on your next turn, you attack something, and then you can always pay two and bring her back to your hand, which is kind of neat. 
I think she's going to be a B overall because she has the three cost, three four stat line, which again gets you to that C range. But then sometimes she'll have ambush, and sometimes you can like bounce her back to her, her hand for you know some better value. It's kind of cool that she brings the upgrades with her, so you could like throw an upgrade on her, kill a unit, bounce her back to your hand, replay the upgrade, like in the really late stages of the game when you have more resources, um, and that might feel pretty good. Next up, we have Sabine Wren. You can count on me. It is a four-costed, four-four fringe Mandalorian Spectre unit. While this unit is exhausted, she cannot be attacked. On attack, you may discard a card from your deck. If it doesn't share an aspect with your base, deal two damage to a ground unit. We'll pretend that about half the time it won't deal, uh, won't share, you know, an aspect with your base. So 50% of the time, she just on attack does two damage. She has one stat less than she should, but she kind of makes up for it in a lot of ways, right? She sometimes does damage to ground units. She sometimes can't be attacked. Um, she's kind of super aggressive for that line, right? You play her, your opponent can't attack her. You take the initiative, you attack for four, your opponent can't attack her. She's super annoying. And then not only can your opponent not attack her after you do that, but now maybe we're doing two damage to things and picking them off. Uh, that's gonna be super annoying for our opponent. Um, I'm tempted to like give this card a little bit of a higher rating just because of how annoying it is to play against. And I think I am. I'm gonna give Sabine Ren an A because of just how annoying the card is. And I think she can just create like lethal situations where you're just able to just keep grabbing the initiative and then hitting them for four over and over again and your opponent just is super sad. Um, don't discard too many cards from your deck though. Next up we have Plo. It is a five costed three six uh, ground unit with ambush and sometimes when it ambushes it has raid three as long as you have coordinate up um, you know ambush on five for six is crazy we're on like killing a lot of the leaders scenarios there are many leaders in the set with high hp but we'll still take out some of them uh, i really like ambush units i think ambush units should just always be in your deck uh, for the ambush tag, we'll give him a B. I think if you ever coordinate with him, he's going to feel like an A. I'll give this card the two ratings that maybe he deserves. So just in a normal scenario, uh, five drop, three, six ambush, a little understated, but has ambush. Ambush feels like removal sometimes, B rating. If you have coordinate when you play him and you kill something with six HP, it's going to feel like a bomb, like a total bomb in your deck. Next up, we have Republic Attack Pod. Oh, and he's only an uncommon, so you'll see this card. Next up, we have Republic Attack Pod. It is a six-costed 6-7. Six, Thank you, Stat Lord uh, ground unit. If you control three or more units, this unit costs one less to play. That's a cool way to say coordinate. Um, I feel like it could still say coordinate from your hand, but uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, this card costing five is ridiculous, but it costing six is fine. I think if it was just a six cost six, seven, it would be a nice playable. Whenever you get to play it for five, you know, we're actually, even though it would be a vanilla, we're approaching like B plus range, like cheating out that stat line that early is very good. We've talked about a lot already how seven HP just feels really nice. There's not many things that hit for seven. So this thing will be sticking around and living, and it's a common. We're going to see it all the time. I think I'm going to give it like a C plus, B minus, but it's going to be like a staple playable in your deck. Uh, next up, we got Enfy's Nest. We got a 7 cost, 5, 7 Underworld Champion of Justice ground unit with Saboteur. And when played and on attack, you may return an enemy non-leader unit with less power than this unit to its owner's hand. Holy crap, is this card annoying for your opponent. Um, it has 7 HP, so it hits that mark. Uh, on when on play, I mean, <clears throat> sorry, on attack and when play, like returning uh, units to your opponent's hand is super annoying. If you guys look at the space land, uh, you know, there's not many space units at all with, you know, more than five attack. I guess they need to, I guess, more than four attack because it needs to be less power. But yeah, there is a few with five. So yeah, it has to, but it has to be... Um, the other way, which is, it just seems pretty hard. She avoids the Sentinel with her Saboteur, and she's doing this every turn because she has on attack. That's uh, really, really oppressive. I mean, she only really gets countered by, you know, like this card, kinda, and by like seven sevens. Um, I really like her. She is feels relevant right away. She can bounce tokens and make them never come back. She can kind of return those um, exploit cards back to your opponent's hand so they have to tribute more guys if they want to cheat them out. Uh, I think this card is a solid A. Um, I think I think if it said greater than or equal to, 
she would be an S. But this this card is like definitely a, an include. It's definitely a card that's gonna make you wanna move towards that color. Uh, I really like this card a lot. I think she can pressure. She's annoying for your opponent. She bounces stuff. Overall, very solid. Uh, yeah, almost, almost an S. Could be one. Next up, we have Clear the Field. It is a two-costed event. Choose a non-leader unit that costs three or less. Return it and each enemy non-leader unit with the same name as it to their owner's hand. So this is a great way to deal with tokens because you're returning all of their tokens to their hands, which means they're disappearing. Also, you can just, you know, bounce small guys. This card only costs two. I think this is like an auto super include if you're playing yellow. Like there's going to be lots of tokens running around and this is going to be a cheap answer to it. And you can also just sometimes answer dudes. So yeah, this is solid. I think it takes the premium removal spot at a B. I think, you know, I don't know if it's going to be game winning like an A, but it should be an auto include premium removal slot in your yellow deck next up we have creative thinking it is a two drop exhaust a non-unique unit create a clone trooper token so you know at the end of the day it could just be a two mana two two which is pretty underwhelming maybe exhausting a unit is worth like half a resource but it's non-unique um i think this card is probably just a d i think most of the time you rather just be playing a two three or a three two unit um I think if you have like Clone Trooper Synergy, this card's gonna go a little bit up in your deck, but I'm gonna call it Niche and give it a D. Next up, we have Aid from the Innocent. It is a five-costed event. Search the top 10 cards of your deck for two non-hero units and discard them. For this phase, you may play the discarded cards and they each cost two less. Really weird, right, that it's a hero card getting two Oh, sorry, it's two hero non-unit cards. Totally read that, like, completely wrong. Two hero, I'm like, oh, why is this card not getting hero units? Yeah, two hero non-unit cards. Um, yeah, so we're paying five to get a discount of two twice. And by math, math two times two, my fingers, is four. Pretty good maths there, right, guys? Two times two is four, so I am paying one resource to draw two cards, but they're not units. Uh, this card's really weird. Um, I, I feel like on five resources, you can never be like, hey, I'm gonna go soul searching from my deck and hope the cards I find are relevant. That seems weird to me. And also, here's here's the biggest kicker, guys. I don't, I know it sounds like we're only paying one resource, but what events do you know only costs two resources? So if I hit a, a, an event that costs four twice, and those are the two cards I get, so now I'm paying five resources to get two four-cost events that now cost two, so I have to pay nine resources to attempt to play those two random cards from my deck. Do you guys see what I'm getting at here? I mean, unless my deck is filled with two-cost events, <laughs> right? Like, we're just super overpaying. Like, this card is really weird. I think it had to be overcosted because it's like technically drawing you the cards. But even still, really bad. This is an F. Sorry I said that in the weirdest way ever. Finally, guys, we got the double yellow cards. We got Jar Jar Binks, one of the best cards in the set. Hear me out, guys. It is a two costed two three that lets you flip a coin, roll a dice. I don't know, whatever this game wants to let you do because on attack, he deals two damage to a random unit or base. We never know what he's gonna hit and that, guys, is fun. So good job, Jar Jar Binks, for being the F we've always wanted to play. Next up, we have double skip. We have Ch Chancellor Palpatine. It is a four-costed double yellow 2-6 unit. As a reminder, since we're getting to a real card, these double-colored cards, these mono-colored cards, I always... Um, make cost two more when I evaluate it because we should almost never be two color uh, the same color twice. Uh, we shouldn't be playing a yellow leader with a yellow base unless you know we're going crazy. I've only done it once out of like the 40, 50, I don't know, 60 games of sealed and pre-release and draft that I've played of this game. Um, like tournaments, sorry. So you know, like it's it's only happened once and it was very specific and it was kind of memey and you know it only worked out because I had the two two that that got really big and I was blue and it doesn't matter, right? But 
I was uh, playing like five cards out of color just to resource them to make enough cards. So even, even still, it was kind of hard. But anyway, this guy costs six resources most of the time and is a two six. Your tokens entering play ready is a strong effect because you know you get to swing with them right away. And it says on attack, if a unit left play this phase, create a clone trooper token. So he actually has like two decently strong lines of text. The problem is, is they feel decently strong at four resources. I think at four resources, this card feels really, really good, similar like to a bomby card, but at six resources, I think it's dreadfully slow and its stats just don't, don't work at six costs. So don't play this card. I think probably an F most of the time, maybe a D. But I think if you somehow manage to achieve double yellowness, this card will feel like one of the best cards in your deck and will be A. Uh, next up, we have Impropriety Among Thieves. It is a four-costed double yellow. Choose a ready non-leader unit controlled by each player. I remember this card. If you do, each player takes control of the chosen unit controlled by the player to their right. At the start of the regroup phase, each player takes control of each unit they own that was chosen for this ability. Man, just for the amount of text on this card, we got to give it an automatic F. Uh, I don't think I want to pay six resources to read a book, but in all honesty, uh, yeah, there is a lot of words on here, but pretty much we're just shuffling control of units um, for a turn. Uh, I don't know. This is indeed a trick. Like, maybe you can get some use out of it. I don't know. I am sure there are scenarios where this card's going to be really good, um, but I don't know. Like, okay, let, let's... Let's, let's really hunker down. Like, what is what is the true value of this card? So, I get to choose the card. So, I choose my opponent's best card. It's on six resources. I take their five, six, because they played the best card they could the turn before. And I give them my piece of crap, one, one, that is staying around the field. So, now I have a five, six. They have a one, one. I take their five, six, and I slam it into their something. I don't know. I can kill one of their units. I can attack it into their leader and maybe it dies, which then it feels like removal. And then I sneak back my one drop. I mean, that's kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. This is the type of card that I would read a million times. I would play it in my deck and I'll be like, I'm gonna find the scenario where this card works. And you know, that line of thinking to me is like a D. Even if this card like ends up being like super insane crazy, like it can't be crazy all the time. It does a weird thing and I think it's like hard to do, hard to use, hard to do. I think I'm gonna give it the niche rating. I think this thing can maybe steal a game, maybe, but I think that's gonna be really hard to do. Um, I don't know, really, really tough card to evaluate, guys. Yeah, let me know your comment, your thoughts in the comments below. Next up, we have Clone Dive Trooper. It is a one costed two one Clone Dive Trooper. He is a clone that's diving and he's troopering, I guess. Um, wouldn't it be like dive clone trooper? Whatever. Anyway, it has coordinate when this unit is attacking. The defender gets neg two, neg zero. Uh, it has a pretty bad coordinate effect. Um, I think you could have probably just given it that effect and it would have felt like not a great card. Uh, I'm gonna give this card a D rating. I don't think you wanna play it unless you're really hurting for turn one plays. Next up, we have Independent Center. It is a one costed zero four ground unit, Separatist official. Uh, you can pay two to exhaust a unit with four or less power. This card is like Grogu, but uh, you know, way worse. I uh, don't think you ever wanna play this card, F. Next up, we have B1 Security Team. It is a two costed three one Sentinel unit. Uh, so this card sacrifices one stat to gain Sentinel. Um, I think against the one one decks, it's gonna feel pretty bad against the two two decks. You know, the good guys, I think it's going to feel fine, uh, you know, but, you know, there are things that deal one around here when you play against Dryden Voss. I think that was his name, the leader, right? You play this card, your opponent just plays a two drop and kills it. So there's a lot of scenarios where you can't really play this card, but it has three attack. Um, I think this is a good example of like a really low C. I think this is like a two drop that you consider cutting, but maybe you don't because you're like, this is a Sentinel unit and maybe I can throw it in later in the game and... You know, Sentinel with three attack is just kind of annoying for our opponent if they don't have the one ones to ping this off. Next up, we have Favorable Delegate is a two costed one five. Uh, this card practically says loot, but we'll read it anyway. When played, draw a card. When defeated, discard a card from your hand. So it's kind of nice that, you know, you get to hold the card that it draws until he dies. Um, so, 
you know, you might not discard forever for a couple turns for the next turn, um, which gives you, you know, more information on what to discard. It's a little bit better, I think, than saying draw one, discard one. Um, especially since, like, if in the scenario where you've played all of your cards and then it dies, you don't discard anything, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, he has five health, so he's living through, like, literally everything in the world, but only one attack. Um, again, I'm really big on stats, guys. I think this card might say draw card forever in some, some games, which is cool, but I think he's kind of niche. I think you only play him if you're hurting for two drops, and for that, I'm going to give him a D. Next up, we got Hotshot V-Wing. It is a two-costed 2-3 two, space unit with no text at all. This card is a good example of a C. It's playable. It's a turn one play. It has the stats. It's in space. Put it in your deck. You're probably not cutting it, but it's not going to be anything special. Next up, we have Lux. It is a two-costed 3-2 three, two, separatist ground unit. Um, when an opponent plays a card, if that opponent paid less than the card's cost to play it, ready or exhaust a unit. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like this guy. So, you know, we got a two cost three, two. That's what I'm looking for. And then sometimes it does something else. Um, like whenever my opponent's like cheating with exploit. Uh, I think that reading any unit is actually kind of scary. Like, oh, you exploited? Let me just ready my mall leader. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. So I think he has like fine playable, you know, the C rating, but then he has like that effect that can just be bonkers. So I'm going to give him a B. Like this card should just always be in your deck because like some games you'll just hit this upside and win. Uh, next up we have Slime Moor. Uh, it is a three costed 3-3 three, three Republic official. When played, take control of an enemy token unit and ready it. At the start of the regroup phase, that token unit's owner takes control of it. Uh, I actually like this card a lot. Um, it's understated, but you can take their 1-1 one, one, or 2-2, two, two, and I almost guarantee in this format, 98% of the time, you'll be able to take their token and attack it into something on their field. Um, that's very impactful. I'm going to give this card, like, the higher range of a B. I think you could be, like, taking an opponent off their exploit turn. I think you could be taking their card and then exploiting there with it, and it doesn't feel like a minus as much of exploit. Like, you play it, you take their 2-2, and now you have two cards on your field to exploit. That feels really, really strong. So like I said, I, this card I think is might be a little bit underrated, but it's going to feel really good in games, and it's going to get that higher B rating, like approaching A, might even be that A. Next up, we have Freelance Assassin. It is a three-costed 4-2 Underworld unit. When played, you may pay two if you do deal two damage to a unit. Uh, this card's kind of neat. Um, it has like, hey, if you played on three resources, I'm a 4-2, a little understated, but I got four attacks, so I'm fine. And if you, you know, have me later in the game, maybe you can pick off something. Yeah. Um, I know, I don't think I'm excited to pay five mana for a 4-2 that deals two, but I think it'd be fine. So I think this card is playable. You know, it has both modes of, of being fine-ish, so yeah, just, you know, probably play it. Next up, we have Sanctioner Shuttle. It's a three-costed 2-3 two, three with Coordinate. This unit captures an enemy non-leader unit uh, that costs three or less on play. Um, I don't really like understated spaceships. I kind of like spaceships that are capturing things because I think space is harder to deal with. But as I said before in my other colors, there are a lot of 3-4 spaceships. I think the yellow spaceships in the set feel a little weaker, but there are a lot of 3-4 spaceships. So this card is going to get value traded even if it does end up capturing something. So I'm going to give it a D. You should only really play it if you're hurting for the 3-drop or space unit slot. Next up, we have Hidden Sharpshooter is a 4-costed four 4-3 four, ground unit with Ambush. Uh, nice. You should just always play ambush units, guys. If your opponent's playing Ventress, boom, we took it out. Um, yeah, this is a B. Ambush sometimes just feels like removal, like premium removal. Obviously, it's not premium because it's a little conditional, but yeah, I like this card. Put in your deck. Ambush is a great keyword. Next up, we have Geonosis Patrol Fighter. It's my background for this video, so surely it's a good card. We'll see. It is a five-costed 3-2. Space unit, not looking great. Uh, when played, you may return a non-leader unit that costs three or less to its owner's hand and has exploit two. So you can either return your stuff or their stuff. Um, it doesn't bounce anything super impactful. I mean, obviously you can always bounce tokens just to practically remove them. Another problem with it is its stats. They are really small. Um, even if I'm like casting this for one, <laughs> By killing two one ones, which again, 
not ideal. I'm not really feeling good about this card. So even though it is my background for the video, I'm gonna give the card a D. I think it's just a little underwhelming. Uh, next up we have Fives. It is a five costed five five named Fives in search of the Fives with Saboteur. And when you play an event, you may high five your opponent that's not what it says. You may put a clone unit from your discard pile on the bottom of your deck. If you do, draw a card. So a five mana five five is just totally reasonable. I think its stats are a little underwhelming, but it also comes with Savitar. It also says like draw a card sometimes. So I'm gonna give this card like a C plus B minus. I kind of like the added value of like my events drawing me cards if I have a clone unit, which there are a lot of clones in this set. Next up, we have Tri Droid Suppressor. It is a seven cost, four seven ground unit with exploit two. When played, exhaust an enemy ground unit. His when played is a little bit underwhelming. If I'm able to play three resources for a four seven, I am through the roof, but I have to kill two one ones in the process. I think this card, you know, I don't really ever really want to be paying seven four, but I actually see myself a lot of the time, you know, killing a one drop to make a four seven. I mean, a one mana one one to make a Killing your token 1-1 one, one to make a 4-7, which feels fine. I think this card is like on the lower end of a C range, but I'll make it playable. Uh, next up, we have our upgrade, so we're all done with units. It is a one-cost upgrade droid cohort. Attached unit gains when defeated. Create a battle droid token. So this card kind of like alleviates that downside of upgrades of getting two-for-ones um, because, you know, when your unit dies, it, you're just going to get that 1-1. One, one. Uh, though bound spells will destroy you uh, a one mana plus one plus one is very very underwhelming um, Not really in love with this card. I like that. It can make a one one in the future So maybe I give it a D but this is like a D minus guys I think you avoid this card like the plague almost every time uh, Next up we got on top of things another upgrade attached unit can't be attacked this phase um, Unless it has sentinel and that's an on play effect um this card's kind of whatever. I mean, the stats it gives, plus two, plus zero, is really, really low. So obviously, you're really trying to, like, anchor in that on play. I mean, you have initiative, you put it on your leader, and then they can't attack your leader that turn, and maybe your leader is just small and hitting them for eight. Um, you know, I think this card's pretty niche. You're going to want to resource this card most of the time. Um, in the late game, maybe for some reason, like... It's weird because like even if you have initiative, that means you could have just attacked with your unit and gotten its value off right away. So they need to have like a board that can deal with your unit, and you put them in this weird scenario where like you attach and attack because they couldn't attack, and then they have to claim after you attack because otherwise you're gonna claim and kill them. Like those scenarios are kind of cool, um, but I think again they're niche, so I'm gonna give it the D rating. Next up we have a three costed upgrade, Shadowed Intentions, attached unit. Gains. This unit can't be captured, defeated, or returned to its owner's hand by enemy card abilities and gives plus zero, plus zero. For all intent and purpose, this card pretty much says nothing. I think it's an F. I think, you know, it has some uses in the sideboard, in like Constructed, or some weird decks in Constructed. But I mean, I I don't I don't think your opponent's going to reliably have anything that says remove anything, for the most part. And for you to spend three resources to say, hey, now you can't remove my guy, but you can still attack it, that feels pretty bad. So... We're gonna give this card an F, just don't play it, even though it has pretty cool art. Next up, we have Pers In Pursuit is a zero costed event. Exhaust a friendly enemy unit, um, a friendly enemy. Exhaust a friendly unit, if you do exhaust an enemy unit, sure, I'll tap my one one and tap your big guy, right? Ooh, it doesn't hit leaders, it costs zero, um, zero resources, but a whole card. I don't think I wanna play this card almost any of the time. I think sometimes it'd be cool to exhaust a unit, but if I'm playing, cards like this then like i have less units in my hand to even play so i'm gonna give this card an f you guys might be mad at me for that one so let me know if you use this card to win the game next up we have political pressure it is a one costed event choose an opponent they may discard a card from their hand if they don't create two battle droid to tokens i think if this said one resource create two tokens it would be nutso if you are playing against this card you should just discard a card from your hand um, on turn one, it's fine. Your opponent played a whole card. Just discard your card and just let them do the one for one and not play a two drop that turn. Okay, do not give them one resource to one ones. So I think if your opponent 
Um, I think in most situations, your opponent can just choose to discard a card, and this card will be like an F. In whatever situation your opponent chooses to not discard a card, it's going to be very good, like a C or B. So guess it depends who you're playing against. Next up, we have Unmasking the Conspiracy. It is a one-costed event. Discard a card from your hand. If you do, look at an opponent's hand and discard a card from it. Unless you know your opponent has the most disgusting hand card in their hand ever, then uh, never two for one yourself. That's uh, bad. Um, F. But, um, you know, maybe it's in the sideboard because you know your opponent has like this card that you have absolutely no answer to. So then you just have to resort to two for one yourself as the only way to kill their big unit while it's in their hand. But even then, right, like that's magical fairy dreams. They have to have it in their hand, and you have to know they have it in their hand, and you have to play it at the right time. Next up, we have a two-costed event, Breaking In. Attack with a unit, it gets plus two, plus zero, and gains Savitar for this attack. Nice. It's like, you know, Surprise Strike, but one less damage, but it avoids Sentinel. Um, surprise Strike, I wasn't like a big fan of, to be honest. I don't really like events in general. I don't like getting an extra damage like that. I don't like two for one myself. Um, so I think this card is whatever though. I think people might find nice uses for it because you can get around Sentinel. I'm gonna, and shields, though I don't really think there are like any shields in this set at all. So that's a little, a little bummer for limited. So let's give this card like a D. I, I don't think we should be playing it most of the time, but hey, it's two damage when you want it. And now we have two of them. And it is a three-costed event, and if you control exactly one unit, play a non-vehicle unit from your hand that shares a trait with the unit you control. It costs five less, so you're technically getting a two-mana discount when you only have one unit on the board. I think this card is all about deck building, um, and I probably just... I mean, it's a legendary, so I don't have to talk about it too much, but I mean, if you get this card to work and you get a two-mana discount, that's going to feel really, really powerful. But also, there's like a lot of ways to get two mana discounts in this in this set because of exploits. So, like, wouldn't you rather just be doing like something that you know goes towards that plan instead? But I don't know. I, I think this card is like super niche. We're gonna give it a D. Um, I think sometimes it might do something really cool for your game, but most of the time it's not going to. So I wouldn't really play it. Next up, we have Prisoner of War. It is a four costed event. A friendly unit captures an enemy non leader non vehicle unit. If the enemy unit costs less than the friendly unit, create two battle droid tokens. Nice. I actually really like this card, I think. Um, as long as you capture something that's small because you get two one ones alongside of it. So you get to temporarily remove their guy. But also just the idea of making two one ones right away from one card feels pretty nice because you can use those two one ones to exploit later in a turn, and that's pretty good. Um yeah. I don't know. It's a cool capture effect. I'm going to give it a C because it just does something more than just capturing. And yeah, we did it, guys. We made it through all the cards in all the colors. If you enjoyed my videos, you know, let me know in the comments below. I always like reading them. I'll give you a response or a like or a heart or something, I promise. But yes, thank you so much for watching, guys. And as always, peace.